Hey guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to go, go through how you can uh, paint realistic skin in Substance Painter. Now this here is a breakdown of a project we've already done. So we're not actually showing the painting, but we're showing more of the theory of more, more of the fundamentals and how you can get to a result like this. Painting this would take a few hours, so let's keep it simple. Before that, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. Painting human skin is deceptively complicated. There are so many things going on here. So one of the first things you need to do when you, you do anything like this, like with most other things, you need to get some reference for this. This can be uh, some polarized photography or whatever it might be. The point is at least you have some reference to look for. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that uh, you need to regard the color zones of the face. This is a really important thing to to know about when it comes to painting human skin. There are so much there's so much color variation in the face. You don't just have skin color, and, and that's it. You have so many reds and oranges, blues and greens all over the face. So once you know about this then you will be able to paint far more realistic and more vibrant skin right away. And if you can get your hands on some polarized photos, like from maybe from photo scans or something, then that allows you, it's kind of like an actual photo scan of a person using it for sculpting reference. But like with the pro polarized photos, you can then, all the light can be removed and then you can look at the skin and the color of the skin, how it actually is with no speck on top or nothing to distract you. So since painting skin is quite hard, we are breaking this down into simple steps. If we were to just look at some reference and just start to paint it, that is incredibly tricky to do. So we are breaking this down and using fill layers for it. The way it works is that first we could just go into the base color mode, just hit the C key, and I can see that. And here we have the different layers. So let's start by breaking this down one layer at a time. The, the first thing we do is we start off with a base color. This is a fill layer, which simply just has a base color assigned to it. This will be kind of the average color of the face. So this depends a lot on how much sun damage the person has, their ethnicity, uh, you know, based on where, how old they are, all the kind of different things will depend on this. This is a really important one to get right. And you don't just go here and you pick a color. You need to source this from reference. So important because you don't know what skin color actually looks like. And that's where the polarized photos again can come in handy because then you can actually source it from a real reference. So here you can see what it looks like without uh, anything on, just a, just a base color, and this is what the skin color looks like. Then what we do is we make a red uh, a red fill layer. Now this isn't exactly red, this is again is also sourced from, uh, from photography, uh, photographic references, and it would look like this. So here we're using some, uh, some generic paintbrushes, just like the regular paintbrush, and we're just painting in here. You're just painting where you want the red to be, <laughs> and it's not pretty, but it's very effective. The mask looks like this. Like there's nothing here which is terribly hard to do. We're just using a very speckled brush. Doesn't matter a whole lot which one you're using, as long as it gives you like a fairly like a grunge result. As long as it it doesn't it's not like a smooth brush, um, then you're good. And the main point here is that you're introducing red into the different areas of the skin which should have red in it. And this is where your color zone reference can really come in handy because then you can sort of start to look at where would the reds most likely be you know the areas that maybe there's blood vessels that that ruptures like this guy old sailor alcoholic ancient guy <laughs> it's like his nose would be more prominent with the red and the blues maybe of course the the ears as well and then you would have areas around the mouth as well that would sort of have this red coloring in it What's really important is that you don't just take the, the color zones of the face as gospel. That's a starting point mm -hmm. and some general theory. What you should take from, as, from it is around these areas, there is a, this, some of this general color on most people in general. <laughs> it's not a just paste these colors in and you're good to go. It, it really is a starting point. So you can see here, we're not really following it exactly. Like if you look at this, we have a lot of red around the mouth where in... The color zones, it should be blue. So why are we putting this in here? Well, because this is what the human actually looks like. So a lot of this is sourced heavily from reference. Because we also do a lot of mixing. You know, it's it's like with anything 
we do or you should do it's always start with fundamentals and then start building you know start with something simple and then start building it up from there it doesn't matter if it's sculpting modeling or painting human skin if you start simple you can always add complexity to it the good thing about this as well is that you can also change the color any one time so you know if you want to change this to something more extreme you can easily do this so this means for instance if you want to change this to uh, if you want to convert this to a roughness map later on or whatever it might be you have all the data here and it's and it's entirely non-destructive and that's why we usually use fill layers just because it, it allows you to sort of have this procedural workflow that you can always update then we are uh, going in and just adding some more brighter skin on top of it. This is, uh, this is, we're not emulating the lighting here at all. Like we're not trying to bake in highlights and whatever it might be. We are just emulating where there are brighter spots in the skin. This could be from the sun or it could just be that there is just variation in it. So this here takes a bit more time to actually actually get right. Like here you can see that there, is, there are some more patterns forming here. They're still incredibly loose. Like if we actually look at the mask, you can look at the mask by alt clicking here. And there are some clear patterns there we have painted. So this again comes from sourcing our reference. So our workflow is we keep it very simple and we build it up one step at a time and we source from reference in a methodical and proper way. This is um, this is really like a fundamental we're working and this is something I've been I've been using for ages for like 10 years now since I was uh, poly painting in ZBrush. So it doesn't matter what software we're using if you're in Mari or Painter ZBrush it really doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is just that you have this understanding of how to build it up. Then we're just adding some slight yellowness to the skin. You can see it just becomes a little bit more yellow, uh, just just to break it up a little bit. This is this is quite a subtle map, and you can see that I'm trying to put yellow where the the bones are, where where the skin is really thin around the bones. This would be around the cheekbones, around the skull here. It's almost like you can see a little mini skull around it, like so. So it, it just it just helps to helps to, to read a little bit better where the bony landmarks are. And for someone like this guy who's uh, obviously a heavy drinker, you know, it's the yellow is is sort of you can use it also as a storytelling element, not just yellow in the skin, but maybe like liver failure, which leads to, you know, the 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 pigment in your skin can start to change a little bit. Yeah, this guy's been drinking all of the things. <laughs> Then we have some blue. This is one of the ones which really surprised me when I was learning about skin, like how much blue there is in the skin. And like later we have like more cyan or more like uh, more pink as well. So this is again just adding some blue around uh, around the, the eyes as well. But but you really can't just make a formula. Like this is how you're painting human skin. You need to you need to vary this based on who you're doing. If you're doing a, a baby or a very young person, you would you would keep this a lot simpler. If you were to paint this, transfer this texture map here oh to to like a five year old, <laughs> it would look terrible. Now babies tend to be pretty uniform. Like their skin, I mean their skin has hasn't taken any damage yet, so it's it's pretty in perfect condition. So you can just see here, just we're just bringing it in around around the eyes here, as you can see, but then just a little bit around different areas as well. We're just adding some randomness to it as well. The cool thing about doing like this, you don't have to be like extremely exact. You can see here, it's kind of like zigzaggy. It's kind of it's a bit sloppy, but you can't actually see it when you're you're blending them in like this. You can barely see. It's just a little hint of where it is. And then we're just adding some manual splotches. Already now, you can see just from adding these uh, these like four layers together, incredibly, incredibly simple layers to do. We're just we're getting to a spot where it looks pretty decent. And now we are just adding some splotches to it. This is this is essential because otherwise your your eyes will just kind of keep wandering all over the place. But now we have some focal points. So we look at the character now under the, um, in the material view. Now you can see what this looks like. But it's also crazy, right? How much the spec and the lighting information deletes yeah. uh, so much of your color. It really, it really desaturates the color quite a lot. This is why when I'm texture painting, I'm always making it more high contrast and I'm always making it more saturated and I'm always trying to make the patterns here even stronger because now you can see they almost disappear entirely. You can see a little bit of variation, but you, you, you have to exaggerate it so much. And this lighting here isn't even the worst of it. Like if, if you were to enable some sort of scattering on and a lot of bump on top, there's no bump here whatsoever, then like you can't see anything. <laughs> 
it's almost like when we've been dealing in production with full-on polarized photography, it's almost like you can't see it. It just blurs into general color zones of it. So just really take this seriously, how much you lose the moment you, you enable lighting. Yeah, and then once you add, you know, uh, subsurface on top of that, you lose, you lose even more it's definition. Gone. So it's important to amp it up a little bit. Then we're adding splotches to it. This is, uh, we're adding some nice pink splotches, and this is just to add some nice variation to it as well. So this is set to overlay as well, so uh, it would just blend a bit nicer. But uh, you can see here how simple this is. It's, it's really nothing complicated. We're just going over here with some generic splotch brushes. This is something which scatters around. And if you're wondering like what brushes are we using, it, it's really not important. Uh, like you can see, you're, there's nothing special here in the brush. What's important is just that you have something which just scatters it around a fair bit. And then you can add some manual points like up here and some of the ones down here as well. And again, you just hit the Alt key to go into the actual, uh, actual mask. So now we're starting to add variation to this. What's important when you're doing these kind of splotches is be aware that your brain will form patterns and you will start to add these at equal distance with equal spacing and they have the same size. So it looks very mechanical. It's one of these weird things where it's, it's so hard to add randomness into, into your texture maps because we're just pattern finding machines as humans. I can't remember. I think one of our design teachers was like called it fence posting or yeah. something where it's like you as people were so programmed to see patterns and to create equal distances between everything. It's kind of like when we're putting down a fence, each post for the fence is like an equal distance. And we do the same thing when we're painting. And especially when we try to paint randomness, it's like it's like the brain is even worse at doing it random just because we're trying to be random. You can see here as well, there's a little there's a little mistake up here. And the reason is because this model here isn't symmetrical and it's painted major, uh, with the vast majority of time is spent painting symmetrically now. So there are some areas here. You just have to be aware that if you are painting with symmetry, that you're going to have to do some touch-ups. Then we have a, like a vascular pass as well. This is using uh, like a nice vascular brush. You could find this is all default in Painter. And it just adds this really nice vascular feeling. Uh, again, it's set to overlay with something like 60%. So a lot of this will be blended really nicely. So clearly you're not going to be painting in this mode here. You're not going to be painting with the mask active. This is just to show you. So you can see how, how little it contributes and how little you can see of the pattern, but it just breaks it up just a little bit and just it just makes it feel more, more organic right away. Like look at the ear, you can see all the tiny little blood vessels. You can see them here as well on the cheek or around the nasolabial fold. And all these small little things, while they're not that important by themselves, they're incredibly important for the whole picture. I just love the word vascular. <laughs> And then we have hand painting. Now you can see here up here, we are we are going in and just straight up fixing errors and we're just going in and adding a lot of variation ourselves. This is where, this is this is a regular layer, no, no fancy fill layers or anything like that. This is where we're just going in and just going a bit crazy. This is something you should be careful about doing. You see here that we, um, we have, uh, we painted in some of the, the shadows into it. So you should never really bake shadows into your, your texture maps. And the reason is because now you're fighting against the actual shadows of your PBR workflow. Like, you know, if you're, if you're lighting this one angle and you already have shadows baked into it, it, it's really going to look incorrect. But in this case, I'm not thinking about this so much as shadow. It's more like maybe like grime in his skin or something like that, because this guy here hasn't washed his face in ages. So there are just, just some things are just to enhance the, the different wrinkles and creases in the skin. And now you can see if we go to the material view that it's starting to it's starting to look okay here. Now, if we just rotate the lighting around a little, you can see that we're starting to get a lot of the feeling we want here. Take away the hand painting, and you can just see it just it just gets a bit more refinement in different places. So let's go back to the start now, so we can actually see the progression we we're taking here. This is uh, take away the hand painting, take away the vascular, take away the splotches, take away the and then more splotches, and you just start to simplify. Take away the blue, take away the yellowness, which is very subtle, take away the brighter skin, which is really influential, and then red. So you can see here, right, how every single layer just contributes a little bit, some more than others, but they're all really important to get the final picture into it. Yeah, one nice thing is that when you start mixing in the blues, the blues have quite a big effect 
on on what the color of the face actually looks like. And the nice thing is once you start blending this together, it transitions from this blue color, mixes with the red and gives you that very nice purple feel. So yeah, that was this is a really quick breakdown of um, how we've been doing painterly skin or fairly realistic skin but hand painted in something like substance painter it really doesn't matter what software we're using here like i mentioned the the fundamental here the fundamentals here are really that there are there is a lot of variation in your skin and you can easily paint this up using using layers if you do it one step at a time like i said this is something we we've been doing in zebras for ages so regardless of software you can easily do this Keep in mind the color zones of the face as well. You can easily Google that. Just simply search color zones of the face and you're going to find plenty of results for that as well. And make sure to use proper reference. You can Google again polarized photography and you can find a lot of interesting images there. Even though they might be meant for, you might have to buy them to use for texturing. They're great for just collecting reference uh, to be used for this. And now you can color pick them and use that as a base for your fill layers. And then you can just go and paint whatever you want to do. So thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more Substance Painter tutorials and texturing, make sure to leave a comment below as well. And also make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be, be notified every single time we put out a new video. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.